Hey guys, we're going to talk about algebraic tricks for limits when you get 0 over 0. So these are really standard limit tricks. So let's just jump right into it. So the first one is you want to factor and cancel. So this is actually an example that I have talked about in another limits video where I just kind of introduced a concept. So first of all, how do you know that you would have to use this trick? So just try plugging in. So actually, I don't, I don't even want to take the limit here. Just take a look at what happens when you plug in 2 into this. So you will get to so this 4 minus 4 over 0, so you get 0 over 0. So in general, when you get 0 over 0, you want to take your time to really interpret what this means. Don't be so quick to say, oh, it doesn't exist. Um, it's, it's usually pretty rare that uh, your limit will not exist, and it's actually a lot of work to prove something does not exist. So if I look at the graph, the graph is actually a really great way to figure out whether or not the limit should exist. So in looking at this, I can see that as I'm getting closer and closer to this point, it does look like this, this does have an actual limit, right? So the, the point itself does not exist, but I've talked about in another video that even if the point doesn't exist, the limit can still exist. And so that's kind of the whole idea that we're, we're working towards. So the graph is a really great way to figure out whether or not the limit should exist if you're ever unsure. And so then in this case, so like I said, the, the trick here is to factor and cancel. So if I were to factor the top of this, the top of this factors as x minus 2, x plus 2. And so you can see now by looking at this that the x minus 2s will drop out, right? And so then what that means is that I can actually just evaluate this limit, x plus 2. And this is just a polynomial. So because of that, now I can actually just plug in 2. So I get 2 plus 2, so this will equal 4. And if you look at what our graph said, um, this is actually, like I said, an, an example I've talked about before. It does indeed go to 4 on the graph, so I can prove that algebraically, so we're all good to go. Okay, so what I would recommend here is just that you pause the video and try this particular example on your own. So go ahead and try it, hit play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so in this case, so this one can actually be a little bit tricky to factor. This one is using what's known as the difference of cubes. So I will go ahead and just write out what the factorization is. So here's how this factors. So if you forgot that, you can just, it, it's as simple as just Googling the formula. So I'll just write that out. So you want to look up the sum or difference of cubes. Really common um, type of problem to come up in a calculus class, but also very common for people to forget it. So, okay, here's how this would factor, and so then my x minus 3s will drop out. So then I'm just left with the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus 3x plus 9. Now, this is just a polynomial, which means that now I can just plug in my x over 3. So, or so I, can, I can just uh, plug in 3. So this will be... 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 9, so I get 9 plus 9 plus 9, so all of this will equal 27. And sorry, you can probably hear my doggy barking in the background. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about the next trick, which is multiplying by the conjugate. Okay, so just to kind of walk you through this, so you've got a problem that looks like this, so let's just see what happens when we plug in 0. So I just try to plug it in because that's this limit is going to 0. And ultimately I get the square root of 9 minus 3 over 0. So this will give me 0 over 0. So this is a hint that I should probably think about tricks. And so this is where the conjugate will come in. Now, once again, I just want to point out kind of what this might look like graphically. So why don't we just take a second to lo look at the graph. And so we're just going to go to um, desmos.com real quick to investigate. So here I am at desmos.com and I plugged in the function that we're looking at. And I just really quickly want to kind of walk you through what you're looking for when you are graphing these out. So first of all, this, this graph, so you'll notice it stops here. So this is at the point, if I just click on it, I can see the point. So it really stops here at negative 9, which makes sense because the domain of the square root has to be positive. So if I plug in anything less than negative 9, I'll get a negative under the square root, which I can't have. Okay, so the the one thing I want to look at is just what happens as the limit approaches 0. So the graph I drew in the first example, I had a big giant hole, but you'll notice here at desmos.com when you plug this in, you don't see some big giant hole. And part of this is the, the difference between graphing with technology versus graphing it by hand. 
So the actual point where this does not exist is very, very tiny. Now I can actually get a confirmation that this does not exist. I can go to the table. So here, here's a look at the table values here. And you can see here when you plug in zero, you do get something undefined. But as I zoom in, so the actual spot where this is undefined, it's like a very, very tiny little pixel, right? So I'm not gonna be able to see it from the graph. But because the rest of this actually looks really solid, what that tells me is that the limit absolutely has to exist. There's nothing weird about this graph that, that this wouldn't work. So that tells me that I should be able to find an algebraic trick, at least in this case, to make this work. So now let's actually take a look at the trick. So the conjugate is found by taking whatever that square root is, so x plus 9, and then changing basically the sign in between the square root and the other number. So here's the conjugate. So if this were a positive, then you make it a negative, but it's a negative, so we make it a positive. So that's all the conjugate is, in case you forgot. And so now you need to kind of sort all of this out. So you don't want to drop the limit notation when you're working this out. We haven't evaluated the limit, and it would be sloppy of us if we dropped the limit notation. So I'm going to go ahead and work out the top. So the square root of x plus 9 times itself will just give me x plus 9. Then I've got minus 3 times the square root of x plus 9 plus 3 times the square root of x plus 9 and then minus nine. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, a tip here for the bottom. I would not multiply all of this stuff together because a lot of times these problems will work out where something will cancel out so you don't actually need to, to distribute this. So just work out the top for now. Okay, so as I continue to work this out, so this actually comes out to x over x times the square root of x plus nine plus three. And so, yeah, you can see just by looking up here, right? So these square roots drop out and the nines drop out. So it's just left with X. And now looking at this problem here, so my X's will cancel out. And so now I have the limit as X approaches zero of one over the square root of X plus nine plus three. And so now look at this. Um, I have a one on top this part here under the square root is really just a polynomial. So there's actually no reason now why I can't just plug in um, zero. And you'll notice if I plug in zero, so this is kind of like the thing that you're looking for, you no longer get that zero over zero, right? We kind of like got rid of that part. So this ultimately comes out to one over six when all is said and done. So there's the limit. Okay, so on your own, I have one for you to try. I highly recommend you pause the video here Try it out, hit play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so I'm gonna start by multiplying by the conjugate. So here would be the conjugate in this case. And so once again, I just wanna remind you, you don't actually probably wanna work out the, the bottom piece. Leave this part alone, but you do wanna foil out the top piece. So see if that helps. So I'm gonna go ahead now and um, I'm just gonna show you all the, the steps for how to simplify the top. Okay, so now I'm to this point, and so there's actually a little bit of an algebraic trick here I need to use to factor this. So I'm actually gonna factor negative one out of the top. So let me clear some space. And so when I factor negative one out of the top, so what that will allow me to do then is to actually reverse the order on top, which matters because then that will ultimately allow me to factor and cancel. So notice I factored negative one out, so the negative x squared became positive and then the positive one become, became negative and now I can factor this. So I get the limit as x approaches one of negative x minus one, x plus one over x minus one and then two plus the square root of x squared 
plus three. So those cancel out. And so now I am left with the limit as x approaches one of x plus one over two plus the square root of x squared plus three. And now this I can totally plug one into and I won't have any problems, right? So previously, if I would have plugged one into this, I would have gotten zero over zero, but this is kind of what you're looking for. You're looking to simplify this to a point where you won't have that zero over zero anymore. So if I plug in one now, I get this. So this is one squared plus three. So this is two plus two plus the square root of four. So this will really become one half. So there's my limit in this case. Okay, so that'll do it for that one. The next trick is to simplify complex fractions. So one more time just to show you, so what does this actually look like if I try to, so I've got, I've got this limit here. So I've got the limit as x approaches three of this. So let's just see what happens when I plug in three. So if I plug in three into this, so not surprising, once again, I get zero over zero. And I'm trying to drive home the fact here that zero over zero should kind of indicate to you that it's not necessarily that the function doesn't, um, or that the limit does not exist. It's just that you might have to think a little differently about it. And so once again, if we use technology here, so let's just really quickly take a look at the graph. So here's just a quick look at the graph. So I've, I've plugged this in, so here's what it looks like. And so once again, you can see even at x equals three, so we know that this will give us zero over zero, but I can't see anything with the graph. So that tells me that the limit's definitely gonna exist. And I can probably make a guess just from a graphical standpoint as to what that limit's gonna be. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work through the problem. So this is what's known as a complex fraction. And so you have a couple different ways of how you can do it, but I'm actually gonna show you the fastest way to kind of get through this problem. So the fastest way to, to work through this is to first identify the LCD of all of your fractions. So I've got one over X and one over three. So the LCD of those two fractions would be three X. So then what you wanna do is you wanna multiply each part of this problem by three X. So let's see. I'm actually gonna distribute this three X to both parts of the top. So just to be nice and thorough, just so you can really see how that will work. So I've got three X and I'm gonna multiply that times the one over X, okay? And then I've got three X and I'm gonna multiply that by the one third. So I just wanna have that written out so we can visualize this. Now in the bottom, I'm just gonna leave this alone for right now. I'm gonna hope that maybe one of these factors drops out. Okay. So focus on the top here for a second. Notice that the X's will drop out and looking at this kind of pair here, so the threes are gonna cancel out. Threes on top here, threes on bottom here. So what am I actually left with on top then? Well, now I've really just got that the top is three minus X and then this is over three X and then X minus three. And now this is where you can kind of do that negative one trick, right? Where you can actually factor negative one out of the top here to cancel. So what I mean is I can take the limit as X approaches three. So I'm gonna factor negative one out of the top so that I can reverse the order. So this is a really standard algebra trick that gets used a lot. And now because I've done that, I can cancel out those X minus threes. So then look at what I'm left with. I'm just left with the limit as X approaches three of negative one over three X. And once again, this is exactly what we're looking for, right? We're looking to kind of rearrange this problem so that if I were to plug in this number, I no longer get that zero over zero. So ultimately now I can just plug in my three like this to get that my answer is negative one over nine. Okay, so if you wanna give one of these a try, I've got this problem here for you. So you can pause the video here and then hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So for this one, this one actually might not at first look like um, a complex fraction, but if I rewrite that x to the negative one in its um, fractional form, so without the, the negative exponent, it looks like this. And so you can actually still use that trick here. And you'll notice here, right, you still get zero over zero. So hopefully that's, that's obvious with all these problems. So if you wanna get rid of the fraction, so once again, you can actually just multiply every single part of this problem See how I'm multiplying every single part by X. So if I do that, so let's see what I get here. So this is just, like I said, there's more than one way to do this too. So if you don't want to cancel out the, the fractions, that's fine. 
but this will give me um, x minus 1. And then actually, I'm, I'm going to change the way that I was doing this. I don't want to distribute this, so I'm just going to write this out like this just to see what I get. So I'm going to write this as x times 1 minus x. And so now since I didn't distribute at the bottom, I can actually see that these two things will cancel out. So uh, once again, I need to do that, that algebraic trick. So I'm going to factor the negative 1 out of the top. And then I can cancel these 1 minus x's to get the limit as x approaches 1 of negative 1 over x. So now I can finally plug this in. So this is negative 1 over 1. So my answer in this case is just going to be negative 1. So there's my limit. So those are some of the really common algebraic tricks that you're going to use with limits when you get 0 over 0. It's really rare that you actually say that a limit does not exist. And if you think it doesn't exist, you should actually use the graph to kind of help you decide that. But I do have videos where I kind of explain that in more detail as well. So hopefully I'll see you in another one. Thanks for watching.